if white girls can wear messy buns, they can wear messy bun. And that's on big perk. Y'all probably have like, are you still homeless? Why are you be coming on here looking like that? Because I can. And what about it, Miss Samantha? Yo, TikTok is taking over my life. Anyways. You believe God is a woman. Now y'all see my granny panties. I just got my period. Let me breathe. Danny, how you feel? What's up, hoes? You know what the fuck? You know the fuck? You already know what the fuck going on. Y'all, I just wanted to come on here because I've been in a depression, but honestly, when am I not? But like, it started making me think because of how far I am in my depression nowadays versus when I was severely depressed in high school and middle school and elementary school and y'all probably like sis how are you talking about how to be peaceful when your ass is depressed and anxious as hell listen i know i know we know and you know that's a valid you know inquiry Pero nowadays i learn how to like rein that depression and anxiety in and i know what triggers it for the most part and i know how to like weave myself out of that depression so like i come on here i come on here May the fourth be with you. I just wanted to get on here and share my little life hacks with you guys. Truthfully, I feel like there are ways to alleviate the severity of depression. I follow only some of these hacks that I have for you guys today. And I want to give a little disclaimer. Like, this is kind of like a point of view kind of video where I'm, like, expressing my own personal point of view. And, like, it's probably going to be, like, a note to self. In all honesty, because if y'all know, I have no emotional permanence. Like, once I'm happy, I'm happy. And I've never experienced a sad day. You feel me? And once I'm sad, bitch, take me off this motherfucking planet. Like, but right now, I don't know what I am. Because <laughs> the show, not either one of those. Since I've had my depression and anxiety since pretty much <laughs> fucking birth, I feel like I pulled myself up by the bootstraps and been able to help myself reevaluate my depression and anxiety and be able to deal with it a lot more effectively in an ableist society. So yeah, let's get into it. So my first piece of advice that's going to really set the foundation and the basis of this entire video and all of the steps that come after this one is to be authentic in literally everything that you do. When I say be authentic, I feel like the first thing that comes to a lot of people's minds is having integrity and being honest with the people that you're surrounded with, which yes, is true. Like you should always show up for people in the ways that you want people to show up for you. But I feel like in order to express that sort of integrity in your relations with other people, you must be authentic with yourself. You have to be authentic with yourself before you are authentic with other people. I feel like when we're able to be authentic with ourselves, that authenticity is then transpired into an energy of integrity, honesty, and transparency in a society that really needs that. And I feel like personally, in order to be authentic with oneself, you have to be able to allow yourself to feel. We as humans have a wide spectrum of emotions that we don't allow ourselves to dwell in from anger, happiness, sadness, fear and disgust, pretty much. Let's just talk about the whole entire cast of Inside Out. And that's not because we don't want to feel them. I feel like we do want to feel them. It's just the fact that our society promotes this idea that we have to be on our P's and Q's at all times, or for at least 40 plus hours a week. If you're picking up what I'm putting down. And as science continues to prevail more and more things about the human nature and the world that we live in, we are finding that there are more feelings like nostalgia, sonder, grief, apathy, and, and things in that nature. It's almost like our society solely embraces the happiness emotion that we experience and we're all just clinging towards that and trying to run towards that, which is not bad. Happiness is a great feeling, of course, but it's not the only feeling that we have as humans. And as much as the happiness needs to be expressed in our lives, the other feelings as well, like sadness, fear, yada, yada, yada. For me personally, I've always lived in a state of fear. I mean, <laughs> that too. I've always lived in a state of sadness and fear and I feel like I just bounce between those two. And in all honesty, until this year, I have never allowed myself to feel the emotion of anger. And since we are recognizing the full spectrum of emotions as part of the human experience, it got to a point where I had to sit down and ask myself, why am I denying myself that human right of being and feeling anger when Anger is a natural emotion that comes with living. And this is just for me personally. Sometimes people aren't allowing themselves to feel sadness. They aren't allowing themselves to feel fear, even though it's very much there in our brains. We ha literally have the amygdala in our brains that is con it was responsible for the fear responses that we have. And delving into that inquiry of why I'm not able to feel angry, 
I was able to find out a lot about myself and a lot about the world that is around me and that influenced my whole entire being. First and foremost, I just think I have a very soft spot uh, when it comes to anger and expressing angry emotions because I grew up in a very chaotic household as a child. My parents will always be arguing about blah, that's why they got a divorce, much needed, but still didn't really help. <laughs> no, my parents are divorced and they have been since 2004, so I was about five. I don't remember their divorce. I don't even remember anything in, in my toddlerhood, so um, there's that. But I do remember even after my parents divorced, they stayed together and we stayed like living under the same roof. And the chaos never did die down until my mom moved my siblings and I out of the house and then eventually out of the state. And so I just remember from my childhood them being very angry and how that anger, their anger was impacting me as a child. Essentially, their anger triggered a fear response, an eternal fear response in me to confrontation. And coexisting with my chaotic childhood home was a society that was not making anything better for my fear-based reaction towards anger. I grew up in public schools where those that were being educated in were often marginalized and oppressed by, you know, these institutions that reinforce conservative traditions and values. My classmates didn't really make it easier for me either because there was always competition and that competition led to confrontation and like, just get me out of here. So it was like my whole childhood was surrounded by things that I was afraid of. So I learned to just walk on eggshells and be in fear my entire life as I was faced with it in my home and in my school. But also with popular culture, I feel like I learned at a young age that black women are seen as ghetto and loud, ratchet, angry. You know, the angry black woman stereotype that is wrongfully projected onto so many innocent, sweet, and beautiful black women. So I feel like the intersections of all these realities of mine really made me run from that ideology of anger and me being angry or housing an emotion like anger because it was something that I always feared. But this year I'm putting it into that because I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. Whatever Howard Beale said, if you don't know, that's a 70s movie called Network that you should definitely go and check out after this video though. But yeah, so with that being said, fear is not the only emotion that I lived in through my entire life. If you know me well, which a lot of people don't, I am sad a lot of the time. I think that that emotion of sadness to deal with my life because it simply just makes me feel better. I feel like I got that response, my sadness response. From the fear response, I feel like when I express my fear to the people that were supposed to protect me from my fears, they gaslighted me <laughs> into saying, oh, that's not a fear. So like I went to cry about that gaslighting. And when I cried about it with myself and like I just released that sad emotion, I felt a lot better and so like ever since the first time I guess I've been gaslighted and like I had to cry that let that emotion out by myself because I wasn't able to share tears with the proper caregivers. I shared them with myself and that's why I like my solitude because a lot of people are just uneasy about this emotion of sadness and like I get it because we live in a society that wants us to embrace the opposite, the polar opposite of sadness which is happiness. But at the end of the day, we are human, so we have to feel that. And so I let myself feel that for my entire life. And I still do, I still, I don't plan to kick that to the curb because baby, a good cry sesh is well needed. And if anything that I'm saying right now is ringing any kind of bells or you felt the same way about fat, fatness, <laughs> fear or sadness, I would really encourage you to dive deep and ask yourself why. Why are you blocking yourself off from feeling sadness or fear or happiness or anger. And usually when you ask yourself why, you will find the answer because there's always a reason. There is, uh, everything happens for a reason. And like, I stand by that wholeheartedly. And once you figure out why, you'll be able to find solutions to how you can further incorporate those emotions into your day-to-day -day lives. Because like I said, they are very important in our interactions with other people in the world. Because I don't know about you, I've met a lot of inauthentic people and those people, I feel like they've always felt the need to overcompensate for their lack of authenticity. Girl, you okay? Because, girl, what the fuck? And plus, in being authentic with yourself, which leads you to be authentic with other people, frees yourself from the weight of guilt if you are being inauthentic. I've met a lot of inauthentic people in my life and I don't want to demonize them or stigmatize them even further because I feel like they're doing that enough for themselves. But there's always a pattern with these inauthentic people. Like, I feel like they always have to overcompensate for their disingenuous nature. And this is kind of, it's just like a side note, red flag for all the people that want to steer clear of disingenuous people. Inauthentic people tend to brag about how authentic they are. They over explain how good natured they are or how good of a person they are by constantly reminding you that they've been honest with you, even though you didn't ask. Or just boasting about the good things that they've done in society like it. For example, if an inauthentic person does some type of charity or leaves a big tip for somebody or you know 
feeds the homeless, they will make sure that the, those kind acts don't go unnoticed. Because it seems that inauthentic people try to prove that they're a good person or good natured to everyone but themselves. So they engage in these acts that are considered socially revered and charitable and generous, just to give that external validation that they are in fact the good person that they are trying to portray to the world. However, when you're making a decision based on the external things that you may receive, may or may not, that is coming from an inauthentic place. And that's why it's so important for you to be authentic with yourself because you can then objectively see all of the ways that you may have went wrong in certain scenarios. And if you're authentic enough, you're able to recognize those mistakes were honest mistakes and most likely coming from a place of trauma. And so you're a lot easier on yourself, which then leads you into doing better. Once you know better, you do better. Some people, unfortunately, once they know better, they continue not doing shit for themselves or the people around them. But essentially what I'm saying is the more you are authentic with yourself, the more you feel compelled to be authentic with other people. If you treat yourself kindly by allowing yourself to express your emotions, then you are able to authentically treat other people kindly and grant them the same patience and gratitude and compassion that you were able to grant yourself. And these next little pieces of advice are gonna kind of intersect with the ideas that we just talked about, but I feel like I should emphasize these because these are all surrounding our happiness and our happiness only. As we just discussed, it's not very realistic or humane to remain in this state of happiness all the time because no one is truly happy 24 seven. Despite the ideology of our capitalist economy that tries to push this idea of eternal happiness down our throat. And the next piece of advice is engage in activities and engage with people that support your happiness in the long run. So yes, we are drawn to things like drugs, alcohol, that gets us happy in the moment. But the key here is to engage in the activities and with people that are going to support your happiness in the long run. I don't remember where I heard this from, but I heard this somewhere by like a dietitian or a nutritionist. And they were describing how they view food and how you will be able to maintain a healthy goal and healthy mindset when it comes to diet and exercise and things of that nature if you live by this 90-10% rule. And that was 90% of what's going into your body has to be good, healthy, nutritious food. But that 10% can be, you know, junk food, processed food, Oreos, Doritos, all of that stuff. All the processed food that's not necessarily good for us to continue consuming over a long period of time. And with that ideology, kudos to whoever said that because that is really brilliant because that helped me rearrange the way that I see food. But I feel like it can be applied to our day-to-day -day lives and activities that we decide to engage in because, you know, if we're looking at it from surface level, Monday through Friday, we're going to a job, you know, nine to five, 40 hours a week, blah, blah, blah. When the weekend comes, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we are thrilled because it's like, yeah, I get to, you know, let loose and not have to worry about going back to this hellhole. And in that 40 hour work week, you're not able to let loose and express the emotion that you want to express because you, once you get off the clock, you're ready to go home and just feel happy and not stressed like your job makes you feel right and so like once the weekend comes by you are just letting out all of the, all of the pent-up emotion that you had from the 40-hour work week that you just had and so you tend to engage in low vibrational activities such as like drinking partying doing things that don't really satisfy your authentic self. So that's why it's really important to engage in activity either with yourself or with people that are going to support your happiness in the long run. I feel like the 90-10% rule can also be applied to this idea of what activities and what people are good for us. So if you do have a little toxic friends in your group or whatever, it's good to hang out with them 10% of the time, but don't let that become your 90%. If you have these toxic coping mechanisms of drinking until you black out every weekend, make sure it's 10% of you your time here on earth and let the other 90% of your coping mechanism be something that you can profit off of, whether it be financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically, profit off of it. If y'all don't know me, baby, I try to profit off the pain. I've been through a lot of stuff. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to be able to make it this far, but I have these little things that keep me going, you know, like my nieces and nephews and stuff like that. But whether 90% of your coping mechanisms is going to the gym, reading a book, teaching your dog some new tricks, painting a picture, riding, skiing, snowboarding, boxing. Literally, we have a plethora of activities that we can engage in that aren't harmful for ourselves or anyone around us. So I feel like we should be doing that 90% of the time, most of our time on this planet. Because after completing those activities, you're gonna feel a lot better about yourself, 
a lot better about the progress that you've made, you know, whether that's reading a book, reading and completing that book, or finishing a three hour gym session, two hour, 30 minute, you know. I feel like we're much happier within ourselves when we see progress in our creative endeavor. Wouldn't that just make sense to spend more of your time doing that versus low vibrational activities, which would be just like drinking, smoking, snorting over the weekend, you know, for a couple of hours. And then you have to replay the cycle of the, the nine to five for 40 hours a week. And you didn't even get to the creative side that is your human. You are human, you are creative in some way, some way, shape or form, whether that be painting, writing. You know, I, there are so many ways to create and express yourself creatively. So leading into the next one, that's where it's so important to engage with people that make you feel good about yourself and about the things that you're doing with yourself creatively. Because if you're hanging around people that not your creative ability or your creative instincts, it will dwindle your light and your light is not supposed to be dwindled. You're here as a soul, on a mission to fulfill your soul contract whatever you want to believe in i believe in this this is what makes me feel happy so if you believe in god you know the christian god that's fine if you believe in other gods that's fine you know whatever makes you happy you happy you know that's all literally that all that's all that matters but my perspective i feel like humans are extremely creative and we should be allowed to create whatever is in our soul whatever is in our being and so if you're hanging around people that do not want you to create something because they wouldn't create it or they feel like they couldn't create it due to their own self-limiting and self-doubting beliefs it's not going to be beneficial for your creativity to bloom because you can't bloom in a place or an environment that teaches you that you're blooming and over the top or too much or about Blah, 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 yada 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 it's just over the top for them because they can't see themselves blooming as much as you are so literally just surround yourself with people that make you feel confident in the ways that you naturally unfold like a rose and to me i feel like micromanaging the people that are in your life is crucial for protecting your peace because you should never stay in a place that you feel unwelcomed at walking down a neighborhood you will never go on to somebody's house or somebody's porch that you've never been knock on the door and just like invite yourself in you would never do that right so don't allow people to do that to you, you know what I'm saying? So they come into your space, your vicinity, your authenticity, and they tell you things about yourself that is wrong. If you feel unwelcomed or unsafe or uneasy about a situation or a person, leave. I cannot express this enough. In order to protect your peace, you must leave immediately immediately and this is not to say you know not to give people chances because sometimes people make mistakes or whatever and they like make you feel uneasy and like they didn't know that you have anxiety about something you know but that is up to you to clearly communicate that hey this is not making me feel safe this is not making me feel easy right now you need to tone it down but once you give them that warning a couple of times and they are still doing the things that are making you uneasy you need to leave because at that point they're not respecting your wishes your boundaries and you as a person and never take that personally don't ever let any Anybody make you feel less than for them not being able to respect and uphold your boundaries because again they're not being authentic with themselves so they cannot be authentic with other people they're disrespecting their own boundaries by not being able to be authentic with themselves which is unfortunately leaking onto people that want to be authentic with them and it's causing them to be inauthentic with the people that want to be authentic with them if that makes sense so it's never a you problem it's always a them problem and don't get caught up in that mindset either because it's like you will never be able to put the blame on yourself when sometimes you know we deserve that blame but yeah you know we already talked about that and lastly this is something that is super small and minute compared to the subject that we've been previously talking about like the egg the ego and the super ego and all that psychological scientific bullshit in a way this is science too but this is something that you can more easily control whereas the activities that you engage in the people that you engage in that support your happiness in the long run is kind of you know iffy because sometimes as a teenager you know if you're dealing with uh, homophobic parents and you find yourself to be homosexual, it's kind of hard for you to surround yourself with people that are gonna make you happy and feel safe. Also, if you're impacted by the injustices of this economic system, then maybe perhaps you aren't able to afford um, the activities that you wanna engage in, like traveling or things that require money, unfortunately. But watch the foods that you eat pay attention to the food that you eat and pay attention to how they make you feel after eating them for me personally what gives me energy and makes me feel good about myself in my mental area makes me feel good up here are organic foods or things that just come from nature you know they don't necessarily even have to be from the organic aisle you know just make sure you are getting enough greens you know, fruits you know nuts grains all of that make sure you're trying to get a balanced diet like the nutritionist said don't beat yourself up for not always getting the healthy stuff in you know it's it's okay to engage in or indulge in 
processed foods every now and then. And just make sure you're following the 90-10% rule, you know, that we discussed earlier. But for me, I notice when I eat processed foods, I tend to get more depressed and more in my head, more mental and stuff like that. And I don't know if it's because of a trauma that I have with food. You know, it might be. I haven't really discovered that emotion yet. <laughs> um, but I have noticed that, you know, drinking smoothies and, you know, like eating cleaner has made me feel cleaner up here but yeah i think that's pretty much it yeah you know my secrets to life you know my life hacks you got something on me sherlock i think i got to say everything that i wanted to say for this video i really hope it helped in any way shape or form please let me know in the comments like, give me a like a subscribe turn on my notifications on you know that'll make me pretty happy and if you feel like i missed anything you feel like there's something that could be added to this list of protecting our peace please feel free to leave that in the comments because i'd always love to hear your point of view on things but if this is where we are parting ways i truly wish you the best and like always make sure everything that you do comes from a place of peace love and authenticity I'll see you in the next one. Ride on the cops. That's the run that line of savage known to let it bang bang. Gang gang. Does my breath stink? That was so cute, mama is. It was so to yo, yeah. Is integrous a word? That's what I want to know because like I always want to use it. Why is it like this? Why did I do my hair like this?